Hello, my name is Dr. Bob DiMaria, the drugless doctor with another Get to Know. And today, we're going to talk about female hormones. It's amazing. There is so much confusion today in our world about what hormones are and what they are not. Do you know that 95% of breast cancer is directly related to too much estrogen? See, in the human body, there are an enormous number of different types of hormones. But in the female body, estrogen and progesterone, they balance each other out. Estrogen causes cell proliferation or cell growth. Estrogen is really important for all hormonal function. Progesterone is critically as important, but what's significant about progesterone is it's also a building block for so many of the other female hormones in the body, including something called cortisone or cortisol. And this is what I've learned from my experience is because of the stress that most people have to contend with every day, progesterone, which as I mentioned to you, is a building block to make cortisone, is used up so it cannot balance out estrogen. So estrogen is left unchecked, causing what I just mentioned to you, cell proliferation, cell growth. See, cancer is all about cell growth. We live in a sea of estrogen today. Not only are women impacted by too much estrogen, but so are men. Ladies, do you suffer with or contend with every day a heavy menstrual flow or during the month when you have your menstrual cycle? Do you have tender breast? Do you have varicose veins or spider veins or hemorrhoids or little red bumps on your body which we call cherry hemangiomas? Those are all body signal to me that you may in fact have an abundance or saturation or estrogen dominance in your body because your liver is compromised. See, your liver is so important to process the abundance of estrogen that we have, not only in our bodies today, but from a toxic environment. Estrogen is in everywhere. Estrogen is located in, in the lining of canned foods. It's even in the water we drink. You see, estrogen is applied as a part of herbicides and pesticides, which is sprayed on vegetation, including the food that we eat, and the water runoff goes into our drinking water system. At the same time, animals are injected with hormones, which are including estrogen, so that these animals can go to market bigger and faster. That's why we always encourage our patients to eat organic animal tissue. We also have noticed in our practice that people who eat soy, soy promotes estrogen growth, estrogen proliferation, and abundance of estrogen inside of the body. We don't recommend our patients eat soy just because of that fact alone. And men and teenage girls, young boys, should never eat soy because it puts too much potential estrogen in the body. So Dr. Bob, how do I maintain and minimize the estrogen that I have? Well, number one, you want to drink water from a pure source. You want to have a plan to keep your liver functioning optimally. The number one thing that you can do is minimize toxins that you're putting in your body. I would never put anything artificial inside of your body. That means you have artificial sweeteners, and there are chemicals, all you have to do is look at packaged food. Those chemicals have to be processed by your body. The average person, the average female in our society today, I have read various statistics apply anywhere from 150 to 500 different chemicals on their body every day. There is an organ in your body that has to process it. It's called your liver. Your liver is so significant to process this extra estrogen. Let me ask you a question. Do you cry easy? Do you have sore muscles after exercise? Do mosquitoes tend to bother you? 
or attracted to you. Those are body signals to me that you don't have enough B as in Bravo vitamins. B vitamins are needed by your liver to process the estrogen. Our goal is to create a plan, a strategy for you ladies and gentlemen to minimize estrogen exposure. I would also include in my daily dietary regime and supplementation some kind of item or product to help support liver function. I personally use dandelion root. It's a liquid drops that I take every day. Milk thistle is also very good for optimal liver function and liver support. I think what's really critical and so important for you is not so much to go on a detoxification regime but to minimize the amount of toxins that you're putting in your body. I would minimize soda and I know this is sometimes hard for people to grasp but I would even minimize the amount of alcohol that you're putting in your system because the alcohol has to be um, processed by your liver. And If you choose to drink alcohol I would consume organic alcohol, I would consume organic animal tissue, I try to consume everything that you can that says USDA organic on it. Just because it says it's organic does not mean it's pure because they can get natural and organic items that are not certified organic. Drink water from a pure source, very critical. Take time, evaluate what you're putting in and on your body. If you have any of the body signals that I had mentioned to you already, you're going to need to create a strategy to minimize the amount of toxins that you're putting in. Always think organic. I'm Dr. Bob DiMaria, the drugless doctor.